Good morning, ladies and gents. We are back. Today is January 12th. Right now, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we've got our CPI announcement. I haven't even looked at what it is yet, but apparently the market was okay with it. I think it was in line from um, just, I think, a headline that I read. Um, but so we just got into a call spread for the day. I chose 4025 as our call spread. Uh, we got a pretty good distance away. We are above this huge, huge resistance line, which is uh, definitely what spurred me to take the trade. But we got to cross into the purple with our stochastics. And we had a, I guess you could call this a higher low, but um, a bounce off of the pivot points, which I do like to see. So we got to bounce off the pivot. And it looks like, well, it looked like at the time when I placed, pulled the trigger that we were struggling to regain this high right here. So went ahead and got in while we had this wide spread um, to get well above the market. The, um, I want to say the uh, expected move was pretty wide. So at the time I placed a trade, it was a 28. So double that 56 we was able to get 1.4% away from the market. And um, the trend was on the higher, or I would say the range looked like it was on the higher side potentially for the day. So I felt pretty good about that trade. And let's see if we go back, I wasn't happy about my fill, even though this is paper trading, you know, it is what it is. One lesson that I keep having to relearn is to pay attention very closely to the actual trade itself. Um, so you'll, I'll show you what I mean. So if I'm going to set up a trade right here and I've got my limit order in, if this lock is unlocked, it will, this will move around on you. Um, it's going to bounce around on the market, even though if it seems, even though it seems like it's pretty stable, you can see it just move right there. So a lot of times what happens is you'll see it pop up to a number that you like and you go to confirm and send. And right before you click this button, it pops right back down to a lower number. And that's what happened to me on the trade. I should have gotten 20 cents for that particular uh, trade, but I got a 15 cent limit instead of the 20 cent limit that I thought I was pressing on. So I should have paid attention to that or hit this little lock button before I placed my trade. Um, but I wasn't thinking about that at the time. So I, it cost me $5 on that particular trade. So something to pay attention to. It's very annoying, honestly, um, that that's something that you have to think about, but it is what it is. This is there's so many, there's so many little things. It's like a death by a thousand cuts when it comes to trading. It's just the big things you can take care of, but it's like, it's just a whole bunch of little stuff that you really have to, I guess, get used to um, because you, it's not like you can't, you just can't write everything down and read it all before every trade. You just have to kind of get used to it and learn um, while you're, while you're doing it. Um, but that's something to be aware of, but uh, you can see our trade right here. Um, so far it's doing fine. So far the market is um, behaving as expected. Um, another thing that I did is I set an alert 20 points away like I normally do uh, just to give me an alert uh, at 40.05 so I could decide if I, you know, if I want to manage or just kind of draw my attention to the market because I'm going to be doing other stuff like working today. Also, I set an alert at 39.57 to alert me when the market gets down there so I could start hunting for a put. I probably set that a little too close, but um, I can just adjust it if it, you know, it hasn't gone down far enough uh, for me at the time. Um, I've already got a standing alert when the market crosses into the middle with the stochastics full setup. So on my Apple Watch, I get an alert every time the market crosses into um, the middle. So when I have a uh, bearish cross here and a bullish cross on um, coming up from oversold as well. I get an alert on my phone and my uh, Apple Watch. So that's pretty useful, actually. Um, it's a little bit more to set that up than it is to set these up because these you can just right click right where you want to set the alert up and then pop it in. This is a little bit more. Uh, we have to go to the um, somewhere. I forgot. I have to look that up. 
Um, I don't want to be bumbling around on a video, but uh, it's, it's somewhere in there. Maybe tools uh, somewhere where it says alerts. Um, there you go. So it is these two right here. Yeah, these two right here. Um, so you have to set the alert up, I think, from this screen. Um, and it's a studies alert. So it's not like a regular chart alert. It's a studies alert. Um, so I might set some time aside one of these days to show you how to set this up. But this is highly useful, especially if you can't be paying attention to the market all day. Um, so as soon as I get a ping on my watch, I can go pull it up, kind of see what's going on, see if there's a trade there or what have you. So that's pretty nice. Um, so far, we're at 834, targeting 846, but hopefully I can get that put trade off, get us into the eight, uh, 860s, maybe even 870s today. Closing in on that 900 mark. Very happy about that. Also nervous about that. Um, like I said, the closer I get to a key level on anything, it seems like the market wants to try to snatch it away. So I'm trying to be very um, diligent and careful with that. Um, another thing I wanted to show you real quick as well is back here on trading view, the angle, this angle right here. So this is my trade 4025. This is the end of day. This is where I place the trade at and the time that I place the trade at right here. Now, if you look back to the last trade, the last call that I placed, you can see how flat this angle is compared to this angle. I hope you can see that Maybe if I scratch it up, it'll make it more obvious. Um, what you want is very steep angles, very steep angles, because that's going to give the market less of a chance to take out your trade. So if you have a very shallow angle here, um, it's more risky, so to speak. Um, so this kind of corresponds to volatility. This is kind of like the VIX kind of visualized a little bit because the VIX is a little was a little bit elevated just due to the news this morning and everything. And you can see that with the distance from the trade. Because I always trade basically the same distance from the market uh, two times the expected move. But you can see this angle changes on a daily basis like it was really steep here um it's about the same steepness here as it was here so you want to try your your i mean you can't really control it i guess but you want to be aware of the steepness of this line right here just so you can see the steeper it is the more vertical it is the more the further away from the market your trade is going to be so just something else to be aware of as well so like i said as long as the market staying below this line it's trending to be good to go so so far we're okay but it's way too early to tell so i've got my alert set up and i'll go to work and come back when i get an alert so that's what we got so far see you later at the points of reversal today love this love this pivot points look at that right on the pivot um, but yeah, that's what the day was. So what happened was earlier on when I saw this big red candle right here, I said, yeah, it's probably a good time to go ahead and get in a call. So I waited for a green bar to get a little bit better pricing. Once I saw this reversal, I saw the stochastics enter into our mid range right here. Got an alert on my watch and everything like that. Waited for a green bar. Oops. Waited for a green bar and got in somewhere in this green bar. And I got a 4025. And at the time, um, I think it was like 60 points away from the market, 50 point, 55, something like that. Um, because the expected move was like 23 ish, something like that. So we were able to get a pretty good distance away from the market. That's one reason why I took this trade. Second reason, followed some rules um we started to make lower highs and lower lows um so that was a signal of a little bit of a reversal even if it wasn't a complete reversal it's going to buy us time which time is great and when you're in the selling time business um and selling time premium really um we had our stochastics agreeing with us we also had this nice red bar sitting on top of us like a rooftop this is going all the way back to the beginning of 2022 
this resistance line okay so this is super strong resistance super strong resistance we also have the 4000 number huge mental number we also have a ton of open interest if you look into the internals of the market you got a ton of open interest at the 4000 level a lot of shenanigans are going to happen when the market tries to get to 4000 knew that you also got this pivot so we've got three walls in front of us we got three linemen in front of us blocking for us right at this level uh, and at the time this hadn't been breached yet even it got rejected off of this one so you got four linemen ahead of us so you've got to go through four firewalls just to threaten us okay not to mention the distance that you have to go after you've already gapped up today right so seeing all this that was yeah let's go ahead and get in let's go ahead and get in so i wanted to get 20 point 20 dollars for this 20 cents for this trade but one thing you want to look out for is when you're setting up an order um let me see if i can get it pull up and i'll show you when you're setting up an order you're going to see your limit price and everything sitting there and it might be at the price that you want so let's say we got this one right here this order you see 35 cents that's the price that you want it says limit that's the price that you want you want to limit 35 then you rush over here to go ahead and get confirm and send and if you're like me you've done it a thousand times so you just click click and get in but what happens is this is actually moving see it just moved right there right it, it moves on you it moves around so by the time you move your mouse over here to click click and submit the order it might not be 35 cents anymore it might be 30 cents might be 25 cents whatever so what you have to do if you want to make sure that this is the number that you're putting in the limit order you have to hit this little lock button first look at it okay yeah 35 okay locked in now now i can hit confirm and set it's an extra little step it's annoying after you do it a million times but you'll avoid what happened to me today which is i wanted to get 20 cents and i could have got 20 cents for my call spread, which is right here. But guess what? I only got 15 cents because I didn't hit that little lock button. It moved on me right before I clicked the send button and it got me in at 15 cents instead of 20 cents, cost me five bucks. You don't wanna be doing that when you got multiple contracts because that's $5 a contract that adds up. Okay, so watch that. It's just another little thing that's annoying. And that's the thing that really makes trading in general hard all the little nuances like this that you have to like remember because you can't write all this stuff down you can't remember it and recall it all the time all the you don't have time to go through all of that you just have to absorb it through osmosis through experience over time through mistakes and everything like that um and that that's the part that makes it hard and that's you know when I it, it kind of upsets me when I see like um, like these clickbaity videos that, oh, you know, I made ten thousand dollars in five seconds today and you can, too, and all this kind of stuff. Um, like I just unlocked these four secrets and it made trading just so easy and so smooth. And it's just like, no, <laughs> it's no, it's just it's too much going on for it to be easy. If it was easy then we would have a society full of traders. It's not easy. It's like fun. It's doable. It's accessible. It's not like super complicated. It's a skill, right? Just like playing basketball is easy in theory, <laughs> right? Until you get out there and you're playing a competitive sport against like another team that's trying to beat you. Um, then all the little nuances pop up. It's like this. I, if, if I had to sit in a chair and recall everything that I know, I wouldn't be able to do it. Like this was, this is why I'm making this video series. Like every video, I've always got some little thing that pops up that I remember from some bad trade that happened years ago or months ago or whatever that I learned a lesson from and it just pops up and it's like, oh, here's another thing. 
like you've also got a whole layer of like margin requirements you've got a whole layer of regulatory stuff you don't want to get it caught up in margin calls um you know getting your trades assigned what happens if you get into an r lick all this crazy stuff that can happen right um that you have to kind of just know <laughs> you know and it's difficult so it just pisses me off when i see like these clickbaity um videos out there like oh i made you know this and that and it's so easy and all you got to do like i hate that phrase all you got to do ain't no all you got to do because <laughs> you have to do all of it like you gotta you gotta know when the the fed is gonna talk you gotta know when the cpi is coming out you gotta know um what the market thinks in in the the mood of the market like is oil the big um news of the day is is housing is it un unemployment like it's so much crap <laughs> you know that you have to consider and then you got to go make the trade and then you got to hit the little lock and then all it's a lot right and i'm saying that because i want to keep it real with you i want you to i don't want to scare you away but i know next to my video there's like 10 other videos with like some person looking crazy googly eyes in the in in the screenshot pointing to some big letter words kind of like mine i guess i think mine are better but pointing to some words like how i made fifty thousand dollars in half a split second today easily in my sleep in my pajamas and all this kind of stuff um so i'm just trying to i'm trying to be the one that keeps it real with you and really like delivers on the promise of all of these all the stuff that you've heard that makes option trading great right but it takes work. <laughs> it does. It takes work. It takes mental work. That's the thing. It takes mental work and mental work is work because 20% of your calories are burned by your brain. So it's mental work and thinking and learning and trying to remember stuff and recall stuff is work. It burns calories. I mean, look at the pivot points, man. I mean, there's not many indicators that you can get that really the market respects because Think about this these this pivot point was drawn before the market even opened today like these pivot points were there like you can't see it in, in trading view but you can see it in the thing swim like the next day's pivot points are already there look at this right here that's the next day's pivot points they're already there and tomorrow the market is likely to bounce off and ping between a couple of these pivot points right it's already there so that tells you that the big boys are looking at this stuff. So there's not many indicators that have any kind of predictive like power. Like they kind of suggest stuff. They kind of like, you know, give you an inkling, but like say even the stochastics, right? The stochastics will, it'll get to over overbought territory and just stay up there all day. Right. Or oversold will just hang out at the bottom. Bing, 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 bing all day. It doesn't necessarily say like, uh, because it's down here, the market's gonna go up. I mean, the market can just keep going down and the, and the stochastic will just stay down here, beep, 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 all the way throughout the whole day, right? It's like a, it's just like a, kind of like a suggestion, <laughs> right? But the pivot points are different, man. Uh, the pivot points are just different. Like even the people like to use the Bollinger Bands, all that kind of stuff, uh, f even Fibonacci, right? Like Fibonacci is probably the second best one, but the, the Fibonacci can just draw it anywhere. The pivot points, are the pivot points right they're, they're just there and the market knows where they are and they just bloop <laughs> like look at this one two three four five if you want to even count this definitely this six uh seven times that they pinged off of the pivot points today the market i mean it's crazy right um of course it's not perfect of course the market can just blast through like it did today blast through here blast through the air center there, there but i mean you don't you're not gonna find another indicator that just like to the t uh the market just respects it at least i mean show me if there's another one please but pivot points work anyway try to get through all the stuff i talked about today um so that was our first trade that trade worked wonders for us um i had another guy in our chat that was in i think he was in this trade and he started getting nervous around here and i was trying to tell him the same thing i'm telling you like you got all of these blockers in the way you only only one of our blockers was taken out only one got knocked over this one 
We still got this guy. We still got this guy. We still got the 4,000, right? We still have the distance, right? We still have all of this and we still have plenty of day left for it to reverse. It hasn't reversed at all today. So, um, of course, once I saw this red bar, I was like, mm, watch this because there was another trend line that I drew that was like, uh, yeah, like, I think it was like this or something like that at the time, one of these, something like that. And once I saw this red, this red bar right here, I was like, it looks like it might start reversing right here because we are knocking right up against the pivot point, right? And it doesn't seem too excited to go through. It started to slow down here and it, cause it saw that pivot coming. It saw that pivot coming. It was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. And you had the 4,000 sitting right behind it, looking at it crazy. And the market was like, I don't know. I don't know. It started to lose steam and then whoosh, <laughs> right. So I wasn't really that worried. Of course I was looking at it, but I wasn't sweating or anything like that. Uh, the other guy sold because he started, he couldn't handle the heat, right? But it wasn't really, it wasn't really that much heat. I mean, you still got like my trigger, my alert to go off to warn me to start looking at the market is 20 points away and, and that never even got triggered today. So, I mean, it is what it is. Anyway, so we started to get our journey down and on the downside, I was itching for a put all day, itching for a put all day. I was mad. I missed... Um, this stuff, I mean, I'm not mad, but I mean, I wouldn't take, shouldn't have taken these trades if they were available. But, um, you know, I was just mad that the market didn't come down like all day. Like, I can't get a put. Give me a put. And I was looking at this bar, like, you know, with my vampire teeth out. Like, man, I, I want to bite on this put, but like, this dumb. You know, this is old. This is amateur stuff. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Right. Like I'm in the chat, like, man, I want that put. I can't, I, I gotta get it put. Like I'm feeling like, you know, um, but the market just didn't give it to me all day. So I started to see some negativity in the market. I'm just like, oh my God, give me the, these puts are calling the devil's on my shoulder. Like, hey, get that put, that put looking real good. Don't, don't you want that put? I'm just like, nah, man, this, you know, this the castles ain't lining up. I don't have any, I don't have any resistance levels nearby, man. I can't do it, man. The market's too extended. You know, it's over overbought right now. Um, I, you know, it's got a long way to fall. I just can't get this put in. I keep seeing all these juicy, juicy red bar. I love selling puts on red bars um, because you get the most premium that way. And I'm just like, man, it's, it's looking so good, right? Um, you know, that's why I'm drawing this line right here. And I'm like, come on, market, give me, give me something below this line. Crack below this line so you can get an overextension, man. Just give me. Come on, man. Give me, give, give me an end, man. You know what I'm saying? The market's running out of time. Just give me a little bit of put action. So I'm like in the chat. <laughs> I'm just in the chat, like <laughs> fiending, right? Like here they are trying to talk me off the ledge. I'm like, the devil wants me to get this 3965 put. And I'm like, I know this 3965 is going to expire. Worthless. I know it is. He was like, don't listen to him. Don't listen to the devil. And this advance over here, like do it. <laughs> And I'm like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. No, get these puts away. Get these puts away from me. <laughs> they try to talk me off the ledge. And the devil's like whispering in my ear, you put that put looking juicy. I'm just like, yeah, I do really want that put. <laughs> so finally, the devil won. The devil won. He won when I saw the market pop up on this level right here. I saw it pop up a little bit. I was like, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna sell this put. So I found that 39.65 again got me 15 cents for it, which was actually a great deal for this. Helped me feel better about losing my five dollars up here. Um, and got my 39.65. Why did I do it? Um, stochastics finally, finally started to come back up into range. Finally dropped below and come back into the range. So at least I have that to justify something. Um, I've got that to justify, excuse me. And I've got, um, really didn't have that much. It really was just 30 minutes left in the market. It was just like, Hey, look, man, um, still cash is coming back up in the range. We're oversold coming back up a little bit. The market's shown that it doesn't want to fall fast, at least so far, but we are getting into power hour. We're into power hour and it's not really powering. Um, you know what? Let me get it. It's going to expire worthless, man. And this is, this is probably like half intuition, honestly. Like I knew it was going to expire. Worthless. I knew it was, I can't tell you why I just, maybe it's just cause I've seen it a million times or something like that, that don't listen to that. Don't do that. You don't do that. Okay. 
Um, but you know, I've seen it a million times. I was just like, man, it's gonna expire with this. Man, it's it's below this low right here, um, which doesn't really mean much, but it's something. Um, so at least I got some kind of reference point. It's just like the buyers want to buy up stuff today. Like when we all with all these red bars, the buyers bought it up. And it was just like, all right, man, maybe they'll do it one more time. There's nothing really tomorrow for to reposition for or anything like that. Let's do it. So I got in last 30 minutes. And of course, the market wants to jump right in my face, right at my strike. As soon as I do anything. <laughs> right. So got in and then the market wants to extend again and drop down really fast. I mean, this bar happened really fast, but it stopped right at our um, our trend line right here. Stop right at our trend line that we'd already drawn. If it breached that trend line, I would have had a second thought, right? Um, but it didn't breach the trend line. Then the market did its little last five, 10 minute thing where it popped up five, five points in a split second. And then it just kept going from there and ended. So I was uh, over the moon at that, man. I was over there crip walking, man. I was just <laughs> like, I put this in the chat. I was like, yeah, <laughs> give me that money. Give my money, baby. Um, so it was a pretty good pretty good day pretty good day um this was a little bit risky but you know it is what it is you know sometimes you gotta break some eggs all right um won't do this every day won't do this every day and i was ready to get out you know i had my uh i had my uh closing trade pulled up ready to go just in case just in case and somebody asked me do i ever do market orders i might have done a market order to get out of this because the power hour the market can do whatever it can do whatever fast so this would have been a market order for me if i had to pull the trigger and get out but other than that straight limit orders okay straight limit orders all right um uh, what else what else what else i think that's it for uh, the market um one thing i am working on i'm talking uh, to my guy Brian over here at the Magic 8 Ball to see if he will let me use his Discord server because I really don't want to run my own Discord server or anything like that. He's already got like a little community over there already for people to kind of interact with and I don't really want to build anything from scratch. Um, I just don't have the time. So I'm working on getting something for you guys um, that want to join a community, kind of see me trade live i post my trades and all this kind of stuff in this particular chat room already um throughout the day so looking to look at i'm trying to talk to brian to see how we can work this um to get you guys a space to trade um uh, i'm gonna just be straight up with you guys it ain't gonna be free um these everybody in here pays already um including me um so it's not going to be free, but I'm not going to kill you guys or anything. Like, I'm just saying I don't want you to expect it to be free, um, but um, working on it, working on it. OK, but I do play. I do post my trades pretty much live in this chat and we talk and people ask me questions. I answer all this kind of stuff right in the chat already. So I figure it might as well just use that, you know, and then we can commune and build from there. Um, so working on that, um, also working, still working on getting access to the spreadsheet um so that's still in play like i said i've got all of the kinks worked out that i'm gonna work out i added a couple other things to <laughs> oh spreadsheet junkie man um added a couple other things to it as well um but working on that as far as getting you guys access to this i might just combine it all and put the spreadsheet in some kind of way in the discord and then just have one place for everything it's probably going to to be through patreon um but we'll we'll see what happens we'll see what happens all right so that's it don't want the video to be too long i'll talk to you later bye